So here we see the duodenum, the curve of the duodenum going around here. This would be coming from the pyloric area of the stomach. And all these dots here are the pancreatic islets. As we've said, about a million of them in the pancreas. And the tissue in between is the exocrine tissues containing the acinocells, producing the exocrine secretions, which are the digestive enzymes. And when the digestive enzymes are produced, they go down the pancreatic duct here into the lumen of the duodenum. And here we see the common bile duct. So up here you've got the uh, gallbladder coming from the common hepatic duct and the right and left hepatic ducts. And then the bile is going to come down here, down the common bile duct here, which goes through the tissue of the pancreas and meets up with the pancreatic duct. And this area here is called the ampulla. So pancreatic enzymes and bile will both be released out into the lumen of the duodenum. Now this diagram is showing a single pancreatic islet. And we can see that there's the islet core containing beta cells. So these will all be beta cells in here. When the level of blood sugar rises, these beta cells will detect that and produce insulin. And round about here, can you, we can see the outer islet cells, the alpha cells. When the blood sugar level is low, it will be detected by these alpha cells and they will respond by producing glucagon. And here we have an arterial taking blood into the islet. This blood is going to circulate round capillaries in the islet because remember it's endocrine. And an endocrine gland is one which will release its product directly into the bloodstream. So as the insulin is formed, it can pass straight into the bloodstream. As the glucagon is formed, it can pass straight into the bloodstream as well. So it can regulate the amount of glucose in the blood by their combined actions. So this diagram is indicating the action of insulin. Here we've got lots of individual soluble glucose molecules in the blood and tissue fluid. And when they're acted on by insulin, the insulin will convert the individual glucose molecules into a long chain of molecules. And one of these long molecules is called a glycogen molecule. So the glucose will be moved from the blood and tissue fluids into glycogen molecules where it will be stored in the liver and muscles. Now this diagram is indicating the activity of glucagon. Here we have lots of insoluble molecules of glycogen, or one long molecule of glycogen. That's acted on by the glucagon. And the glucagon will convert the stored glycogen back into individual soluble molecules of glucose. These individual soluble molecules of glucose will go into the blood and tissue fluid where they will raise blood sugar levels.
Now this diagram illustrates the physiology of another action of insulin because here we see the individual glucose molecules and normally they can't get through the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. This is normally impervious to glucose molecules. So what happens is that the insulin molecule here binds to the insulin receptor. It's a transmembrane insulin receptor molecule. The combination of the insulin molecule and the receptor triggers off secondary changes, which results in the opening of a gate. And I've actually drawn this as a gate, which kind of swings open like that. So the gate will open because of the activity of the insulin and the insulin receptors, allowing the glucose to go through into the cell where it can be used by the mitochondria. And as we looked at in the talk, this gate is actually a ring. And that ring will allow the glucose molecule, which is this red brick, to go through into the cell. It gates the glucose from the blood and tissue fluid into the cytosol of the cell. So this diagram shows an insulin molecule here. And the insulin molecule has bound to the insulin receptor molecule. So here we see the insulin receptor molecule. And we know that it's in two parts. This is the external part of the insulin receptor molecule. Because here we have the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. And once the insulin molecule has combined with the insulin receptor molecule, that's going to bring about changes that will affect this, which is the internal part of the insulin receptor molecule. So this is in the tissue fluid here, and this is in the cytosol of the cell here. So when the insulin molecule arrives, it combines with the insulin receptor molecule, bringing about changes in the insulin receptor molecule, and that's going to trigger off secondary messenger systems inside the cell. And for this to happen, you need the combination. You must have the insulin molecule itself and you must have the insulin receptor molecule. You need both parts, the insulin and the receptor molecule. And it's only when the insulin activates the insulin receptor molecule that it brings about the secondary changes. And the secondary changes cause the glucose transporter molecules to rise to the surface of the cell membrane They will sit in the surface of the cell membrane and that will allow the glucose into the cell. Because remember the glucose molecules are water soluble and cannot dis diffuse into the fatty cell membrane. They can only get into the cell through the glucose transporter molecules. Once they're inside the cell then they can go along to the mitochondria and the mitochondria will combine them with oxygen to produce lots of very useful energy. So the combination of the insulin molecule and the insulin receptor molecule, both absolutely vital to this process. So as a result of the secondary messenger systems inside the cell, the glucose transporter molecules rise to the surface of the cell membrane. And here we see that in cross-section. So here we have the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. And here we have a cross-sectional diagram of the glucose transporter molecules. And we notice now that the glucose transporter molecules have made a hole through the cell membrane. So this area here is the tissue fluids. This area here is the cytosol of the cell. 
And of course it's the cytosol of the cell which contains these useful mitochondria. And here we see the glucose molecules taking advantage of the open passage from the tissue fluid into the cytosol to pass through to the mitochondria where they can be used. And of course, the more glucose molecules that pass from the blood and tissue fluid into the cytosol of the cell, the lower the level of glucose in the blood and tissue fluid will be. Illustrating one of the hypoglycemic actions of insulin.